Whoa! <laughs> That's a little deeper than I thought it was. Holy <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike, and this is our Wyoming Life, and this is our very first storm of the winter season. I'm gonna bring you along today as we move through the next couple days. 16 inches of snow is expected today and tomorrow. So we've got a lot that needs to get done as far as animals go. We've been preparing for this storm for the last few days, and if you watch our weekly vlog, you'll be able to see some of those preparations coming up on Sunday. But for today, we're gonna to take a look at these two days and see how this 16 inches of snow affects the ranch. Now the cows we've already brought home. The cows are closer to home than they've been over the last four months. They are close to where they have shelter, we can feed them, we can make sure they have water, all that kind of good stuff. And today we're gonna to do all of those things. The reason we bring them home is because they don't have winter fur yet. And we wanna make sure that they're as safe as possible. Also, there's a lot of cows out there that we have to take care of as well. To get us started here this morning, um, I just came out, the kids got on the bus, they went off to school, but we have morning chores to do. And morning chores are something that happen no matter what the weather is like. And this is our very first taste of snow in the morning chores. So I'm not really sure what to expect. I did uh, throw on the thermals. We're down to about 28 degrees. The temperature is still falling actually from overnight. So our high today happened at 12.01 a.m. when it was about 31 degrees. Since then the temperature has been falling and of course with falling temperatures comes more snow as the, as the precipitation falls from the sky. We're also expecting winds of up to 45 miles an hour. So that basically can turn this 13 inches of snow that we're supposed to get today and tonight into a blizzard, which is another good reason to have the cows home. It's still hunting season on the ranch, so we do have hunters here on the ranch right now. Um, nothing is hanging with the change in temperature. I think that uh, hunting got a, a lot more difficult over the last day or so. I did have sunglasses somewhere. I don't know where I put them. Let me go find them really quick. There's nothing worse than going out into the snow. You wouldn't believe how bright it makes things. Today is actually Bean's one year birthday, so wish her a happy birthday for me. Um, of course, we have Blonde Cow Showtime. These guys are still over in the corrals. They've got plenty of food, plenty of water, so they should be taken care of pretty well. Next stop for us is actually the chicken house. We've been consolidating animals, trying to make chores a little bit easier. So in the chicken house, of course, we've got our goats as well, so we're gonna let them out for their very first taste of winter. Before we get to the goats, I'm gonna let the chickens out here. I don't know if they're gonna come out, but we'll try. See if the chicken door works. Oh yeah, look at that. Chickens, come on out. Sorry, scared you. I scared him. Now they won't come out. Probably a good thing. All right, next stop. <laughs> um, I don't think the chickens are going to come out. We'll circle around. We'll check them out again and see if they do. But um, the ducks and geese actually stayed out last night. They've been floating around out here on their pond. A little slippery out here. They've been floating around out here on their pond, so enjoying the uh, what they can get. Bean, stay out of the pond. Bean. So, 
the ducks and geese okay. Next stop is gonna be to let out the goats here and see how they're doing. This will be their very first time even being around snow, so not sure what to expect here. Woof. Ready to let your friends out? Come on, kids. Come here, Bean. Being a crazy dog. All right, Jack is the only one who's uh, Jack just went back inside, which is probably what we should do. Next thing that we have to do actually is get ready to go out and feed the cows. Whew. But I think I'm gonna go inside and warm up just a little bit before we do that. Alrighty, while we brought the cows home and we fixed water and we tried to do everything that we could to make sure that we were ready for this winter storm, one thing I forgot to do was bring the tractor in so it was nice and toasty warm for us. So it is not, therefore we have to trudge our way out to the tractor which is out by the cow barn. Um, hopefully it starts, we're going to get it fired up and we are going to go out and feed the cows with the Hustler feeder, put a little, little something in their belly to keep them warm. Luckily, the tractor isn't too far away. Just a few hundred yards. But it's not gonna be much fun to walk. I guess we could take a four-wheeler over there. Let's do that. isn't as much fun as it looks for me or the cows. A whole bunch of cows up here hiding out in the barn. Not a bad place to be at all real but we're here to get a tractor which we have right here so this will give you an idea of how much snowfall we've had already so this is a pretty protected area not much bl windy blowing snow so that's a good four or five inches of snow right there that's fallen directly down That's a lot of snow. And we've got more on the way. So, <laughs> we're gonna jump up here in this tractor. And we're gonna go grab the Hustler feeder and get some bales out for these cows. Woo! Started right up. Check that out, check out that. That's our snow on top of the hood right there. All right, we're up and rolling here, heading out to uh, get the cows some food. And I think what I'm gonna do is, originally I planned on going and grabbing the Hustler feeder, but honestly, I think what I'm gonna do today, rather than go back and hook up to that thing, is I'm just gonna grab a couple bales from the hay yard and we're gonna roll them out with the bucket, or at least we're gonna try to. And. Uh, Hopefully we can get something out here for these guys to eat. Go back, I wanna get the tractor back in the shop and let it thaw out a little bit before I, run in, before I start running too much hydraulics. It's cold enough out here that uh, the hydraulics and the hydraulic fluid is cold. So I'm gonna to try to take it easy on this tractor a little bit 
this morning since it sat out last night, or it was in an unheated barn last night. Temperature uh, is about 26 degrees here on the ranch. Wind chill is, uh, is 15 degrees. Uh, it's the wind chill, so definitely a little chilly. But not horrible, not the worst we've ever seen, that's for sure. We gotta cut the net wrap off of this bale, obviously, before we can feed it. Ugh. We're gonna get that done. Sure didn't take the cows long to figure out what we were doing. Here they come over the hill. So these guys I want to get fed pretty dang quick before they get here, or at least start getting this bale pushed out. So pick it up. Now we're going to move it somewhere to feed. It's got them a little bit closer to shelter, honestly, is what I want to do. I don't want to feed them out here in no man's land where they've got no shelter whatsoever so we're going to bring them a little bit closer to home so obviously one of the biggest fears when you're feeding in blizzard like conditions which we aren't even close to yet i don't think it's you know i can still see a few hundred feet away but when you can't see farther than 20 feet or even five feet then the big fear becomes running over the calves and that kind of thing. So we can still see pretty well quite a few cows out there. And as long as we can see them, we're safe. But we also have to try to find the gate. I mean, it's somewhere over here in the snow. There it is. Found it. So really what I like to do is keep these cows as close to home as possible in weather like this. Um, and as close to home basically means as close to my home and the shop and corrals and shelter and barns and all that kind of good stuff. Um, that could be the difference between a dead cow and a live cow. We are going to just kind of drop this bale somewhere in this direction. It's kind of hard to see at this point. We do have more snow coming in it looks like. I'm going to try to roll this bale out here as efficiently as possible, but these cows are going to mess with me. Of course they are. All right. There we go. Maybe now it'll want to roll a little bit. I managed to catch all the net wrap on the bucket of the tractor. Come on. Unroll, you big bugger. A really tightly packed bale that's not wanting to unroll at all. Come on. Unroll. It's getting the job done. We're just uh, making little pockets of food here and there. Considering I can't see much. This isn't really the most efficient way to feed, by the way. So if you're trying to save food, uh, this is not the way to do it. But I am just trying to get some food into them. I don't, am I in the middle of the pond? I have no idea where I am. I have to get out get a frame of reference because I cannot see much. I think I'm done. We're going to stick our heads outside. Let's see what kind of damage we've done here. 
obviously not all the cows are here, but those who are, they've got something to eat anyway. So I guess that's our next thing that we need to do. Um, it's going to be tough because we're going to have to jump in the pickup and drive back and make sure we didn't leave any cows behind or cows that are going back looking for calves or anything like that because that wouldn't be good either. So that's our next thing to do once we get this thing put away in the shop and let it thaw out. The tractor, I mean, not me. It's time to take a little drive in the pickup and we're gonna drive through the property whew, and we're gonna make sure that there aren't any cows left behind or calves because that could be really bad. And we're just heading back looking for cows that, uh, that might have gotten lost on the way home um, cows that uh, may have lost their calf and actually went back to find their calves because that happens quite often um, Sometimes a mom will walk away and the calf will be sleeping somewhere and they'll leave the calf behind uh, Then it comes milking time and they're wanting to find their calf pretty dang bad. So We're gonna head back quite a ways I think at least as far as we can before we start running into road problems Which might happen if things are a little muddy or if there's a lot of snow or a lot of drifting um, but we are just kind of looking around, making sure that no cows or calves are out here. It's kind of funny, but uh, there's a lot of times you can't see the road. So having been out here for over 10 years now at this point, um, finding the road really isn't that much of a problem for me. But I remember when we first came here to the ranch in 2008, and our first winter, uh, we had a, a pretty much a snowstorm kind of like this one um, and yeah I couldn't find the road at all I was like okay I just I just don't know where the road is I think I drove into ditches I think I drove over um, you know God knows what but uh, it uh, now I, I can find the road I know where it's at and more power to me I see some cows up ahead by the way um, they are really not in any danger I don't think at this point but it's good to take note of where they're at. These ones um, decided not to come back for that bale that we fed this morning and they are hanging out down here in a hay field that we did not cut um, and because you know the hay wasn't tall enough to even justify cutting it and baling it but they are hanging out down here and, and they're eating this stuff so we're gonna swing by through them just see how they're doing. So down here we've got four cows, four calves. Looks like, uh, well maybe five cows and four calves. Uh, it looks like they're just eating. They're pretty close to home. They're really just one gate away from the home pasture. So, and they're only a few hundred yards away from that gate. So I'm not too worried about those guys. What I'm more worried about is cows that could be miles down here or calves and, and not know how to get home. Especially this afternoon if the snow really does hit pretty hard 
and causes any type of whiteout condition or anything like that. Um, once that happens, those cows can't make it home. So if we find cows down here, probably what we'll end up having to do is bring down a tractor. Uh, we can't fit them in the pickup. So we'll bring down the tractor with a bale and, and try to lead them home with that. So we'll just keep our eyes open. gonna call it and say there's nothing down here uh, there are a few hunters down here doing their thing and I've got the word out to them that if they see a cow or a calf to let me know but other than that I don't see anything uh, this is pretty much my day for today though I am probably gonna come back down and check this out we'll also feed the cows a little bit more this time probably using the hustler feeder to make life a little bit easier and then we'll wait out the storm. We'll see what happens. We've got some orders to pack, uh, some beef jerky to go out to folks all across the U.S. Um, still working on shipping beef. I've got to do some more homework on that and a, a few more deals to get uh, to get hammered out before we can start shipping beef. It's just uh, it's just one thing after another. Actually, it's kind of nice to have a snow day, and really, you can't complain. We had a a long, really beautiful summer and fall. Um, cows look great aside from the drought I mean uh, I just I can't complain about it I can't I can't complain about the snow in fact I'm kind of glad it's here a little moisture so I'll take it we'll check back in with you guys here in just a little bit and uh, we'll see how everything pans out Morning guys, it's Wednesday. I'm not even sure if you're gonna be able to hear me, but we are uh, heading out uh, here about eight o'clock this morning. And we're gonna check some things out and make sure everybody's okay. We're probably not gonna feed this early just because I don't wanna bring the cows all out of the barn. Uh, this is supposed to calm down by mid afternoon. So um, it is what it is, but I really don't want to bring the cows out right now, so we're just going to kind of go check everybody out and see how everybody's doing and then probably hide in the house for a little while. So one of the tough things is that I can't even take a vehicle out unless I take a tractor out to go and do anything just because there is so much snow obviously a four-wheeler a gator anything like that is not going to make it through any of this tractors about it um, I have gotten a couple phone calls already from neighbors asking me to come plow out their driveways all the roads in the area are completely closed so highway 50 59 I-90, everything's closed around here right now. So we're basically snowed in. School's been canceled. But the big question is how much snow have we gotten and how do we tell with all the drifting? Well, I'm gonna show you how I kind of basically judge this um, with, all the, with all the drifting. Just grab a tape measure here. And we're gonna head out back behind the barn. We've got a little bit of shelter from the wind. Whoa, <laughs> that's a little deeper than I thought it was. Holy smokes. All right, so up here close to the, close to the building, I expect a little bit of drifting here just because stuff is coming off the roof. But as we get a little bit farther out, I can get a good judge of how much snow has fallen. And then over here on the steps, this is where I can really tell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean off a little bit down here so I can get to that first step.
and in goes our tape measure all the way down and there we go 11 inches of snow so this morning with temperatures down into the 20s of course tons of snow on the ground I don't think any animals are going to be let out today. The chickens are going to stay in the chicken house for a while. So I may open their door um, just to give them some ventilation. The goats, however, they're going to stay in. Over at the chicken house. Like I said, we're not gonna let the goats out. I am gonna knock the, oh, the snow fell off of the goat can. There's no snow in the goat can, so that's good. Probably gonna leave the goats inside. We'll go inside and see how everybody's doing in here. Whew. Hey guys, I had chickens escape. Holy smokes. Okay, if you're an avid watcher of the goat cam, goats probably aren't gonna be out until later on today. Maybe they'll be back. Holy smokes, look at this back here. Wow. Do Fader back there eating. He's got shelter, he's got food and water, so he's good to go. Everything else just a little bit froze down, but to be expected. So, all right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this one good. Um, storm is supposed to let up about one o'clock this afternoon. And we're probably gonna get a couple more inches maybe out of this, maybe one inch, I don't know. Then, um, then I guess everybody's gonna come out. We'll get the cows fed and all that kind of good stuff. It's hard to breathe out here. Um, but anyway, that's it for me for today. Be sure to subscribe, follow along, explore the ranch life, escape the ordinary, live in a winter wonderland, and Merry Christmas. Thanks guys, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. Woo! I need some coffee, hot, hot coffee. Go home. Go inside.